Uh, hi, I'm Louis Rosenberg, CEO of Unanimous AI, and today I'm going to talk about collective superintelligence, which is an ambitious goal we've been working towards for the last eight years. Collective superintelligence is the unique use of AI not to replace people, but to connect people together in real time to create super intelligent systems that can tackle hard problems that the individuals couldn't solve on their own. I'm also going to talk about a new software platform called Thinkscape which represents the first real step towards collective superintelligence. I'll describe the value of using Thinkscape today for business teams, market research, and civic efforts like deliberative democracy. But first, a little bit of background. So collective intelligence is the well-known concept that large groups can be measurably smarter than the individual members in certain contexts. It's also called the wisdom of crowds. It goes back over 100 years to the famous experiment by Sir Francis Galton in 1906, where he asked 800 villagers at a fair to estimate the weight of an ox. The individuals were wildly variant, but the statistical mean was very accurate. It works. Uh, that's great, but surprisingly, collective intelligence methods have changed very little over the last 100 years. We still aggregate data from isolated individuals using polls, surveys, prediction markets, this works for very controlled problems like estimations and forecasts, but there's actually no crowd. The population exists in a spreadsheet somewhere, which means there's no conversation, no deliberation, no interaction. It is uh, not very flexible and not very powerful. I contrast that to collective superintelligence, which is really the effort to build a brain of brains. Uh, connecting groups of people together uh, in interactive ways so that they can think together and amplify their combined intelligence in systems. So the goal of, of collective superintelligence is to empower large groups to deliberate on complex problems and, uh, and, have, and function as real-time interactive systems. This sounds like science fiction, but Mother Nature has already actually solved this. Uh, biologists call it swarm intelligence, and it it's a method that turns groups into superorganisms. It's in fact the reasons why birds flock and fish school and bees swarm. They're smarter together than alone. And they don't take votes or polls or surveys. What they do is they form real-time systems that can push and pull on a decision and rapidly, uh, rapidly navigate their, their world, their life. You think of a school of fish, thousands of individuals, none of them have the same view of the world, nobody's in charge, uh, and yet they can very rapidly make decisions functioning as a superorganism. It works and it significantly amplifies their intelligence. Same with bees, same with birds. The big question is, can humans form a swarm intelligence? And in fact, it was this question uh, that inspired me a decade ago to sit out and found unanimous AI with the goal of, uh, of seeing if humans can do this, and if so, pursuing this objective of collective superintelligence. So this leads me to artificial swarm intelligence also known as Swarm AI, which is a technology that was pioneered by Unanimous AI uh, starting in 2015. And uh, it started out looking quite like this. So we, we spent uh, years studying how natural swarms amplify the intelligence of groups, and we created algorithms and interfaces that allow human groups to follow similar methods and amplify their intelligence as well. And so uh, the image you see here that uh, looks like a, a glass puck with all these little magnets around it. Every one of those magnets is controlled by another person located anywhere in the world. Uh, they're pushing and pulling on the system while AI algorithms watch their behaviors as they interact. And the system converges on solutions that, that optimize the combination of their knowledge and wisdom and insight in answering questions like financial forecasts and predictions. And so uh, Swarm AI follows the principles of Swarm Intelligence uh, creates real-time dynamic systems. The participants interact in real time. They're mediated by AI and they converge on solutions that are significantly smarter than if you just took a vote or a poll or a survey or used a prediction market. It outperforms statistical aggregation significantly. And it's been validated by dozens of academic studies uh, with major universities around the world. And so I'll give a little bit of uh, a few examples. Unanimous AI and researchers at MIT published a study uh, a number of years ago uh, where we looked at uh, financial traders. We've got groups of financial traders. We had them make predictions every week for 20 consecutive weeks, predicting the price of gold, the price of oil, the S&P 500. 
We had them do it as individuals. We had them do it by taking a vote, and we had them do it as forming a real-time swarm, a dynamic system. And it turns out that when they work together as a real-time swarm, they amplified their accuracy by 26%. Significant improvement. We also published a study uh, with Stanford Medical School, uh, NSF-funded study, where we looked at groups of doctors, small groups, just five or six doctors. Uh, we had them make diagnoses by looking at uh, chest x-rays alone or uh, by working together at, by taking a vote or by working together as a real-time swarm. And it turns out when they work together as a real-time swarm, it reduced their diagnostic errors by over 30% working together as a swarm. And many, many other studies have been performed over the years, seeing similarly positive results. So why do swarms outperform? Uh, the key thing to understand is that a swarm is a real-time system with the participants acting and reacting and interacting, revealing the strength of their convictions to the underlying algorithms, which use those convictions to control the direction that the swarm is moving. And then as soon as the swarm starts moving, everybody changes their behaviors, revealing more uh, sentiments and convictions to the system. So the AI influences the people, the people influence the AI, and the system converges together on optimal solutions. So the aggregation of sentiments uh, is, is not statistical. It's interactive and it's weighted by conviction through a feedback loop that enables the group to actively converge on the solutions that they can best agree upon. So what are the limitations? Well, uh, these prior swarming methods require a, a highly structured question that gets asked to the population, uh, a question with a set of answer options or a question with a range of, of numerical range of answers, a percentage or probability. Um, so that limits the flexibility. Also, uh, these prior swarming methods provide accurate conviction information, but they don't provide reasons why people have these convictions. And so, uh, and so we're only capturing part of the information. Which leads me to a breakthrough technology uh, that we just unveiled in 2023, which solves these problems and allows for truly flexible implementation of swarm intelligence, of swarm AI. We call it conversational swarm intelligence. And so the goal here was to combine the collective intelligence benefits of swarm AI with the flexibility and informational content of real-time conversational deliberations. Because that's the way that human groups really surface ideas and debate issues and converge on solutions is through deliberation. The goal is to enable open-ended questions, unstructured problems. The goal is to capture not just sentiments, and, but subjective reasons why people support or oppose the various options as they're being debated within this swarm intelligence, and still work using the, the principles of swarm intelligence to amplify the knowledge and wisdom and insight of large groups to produce solutions that are significantly smarter than the individuals could produce on their own. So that's the goal. Before I go into the solution, it's worth talking for a moment about conversational deliberation, just to understand how powerful it is. So real-time conversations enable groups to debate complex issues, to express support and resistance for ideas as they emerge, uh, to generate ideas and alternatives, building off the ideas of others in real time, um, to respond to others in real time with objections and, and concerns or criticisms or, or requests for elaborations and converge over time on solutions that combine the sentiment and, and conviction across the group. The biggest problem, though, is that conversations don't scale. Research has shown over, over decades that the best conversations happen in groups of about four to seven people. That's great for having, for having a focused conversation, but that puts, puts collective intelligence out of reach. What if you want to capture the intelligence of 30 people or 50 people or 100 people or 500 people? No technology has thus far existed that allows conversational deliberations in real time to leverage all these benefits and leverage the power of collective intelligence. Why don't conversations scale? Because once you get beyond four to seven people, you reduce the airtime per person. Uh, Turn-taking dynamics fall apart very quickly beyond seven people. Uh, by 10 to 12 people, conversations just become a sequence of monologues. So how can you enable 100 people, 1,000 people, a million people to hold a real-time conversation that is thoughtful and deliberative and actually leverages and amplifies the collective intelligence of the full population? And that's conversational swarm intelligence. 
And like all forms of swarm intelligence, it goes back to biological systems, uh, particularly fish schools, and fish schools are amazing. And so, um, again, as I said before, fish schools, thousands of members, nobody's in charge, yet they can function as a superorganism. A predator shows up and they instantly move in the right direction. Uh, how do they do that? Well, they do it because they have this special uh, organ that they've evolved called a lateral line uh, that detects vibrations in the water around them. And so each fish can detect the subtle motions of their near neighbors. And so uh, if, if their nearest neighbors start to turn in a direction, they can, they can detect the strength of that sentiment um, and basically have a conversation with, with this small group of fish around them. Each fish only interacts with a small subsuit, subset near them, uh, but the subsets all overlap. And so information quickly propagates across the full population, allows this fish to have this rapid reaction and make decisions as a group that's better than the individuals can do on their own. Uh, this gets the benefits of collective intelligence, even across large populations, even though each each individual can only communicate with a small number of others. And that was inspiration for us at Unanimous AI to say, well, how can we do this in human groups, in large human groups conversationally? And so the first step in our innovation uh, was to divide the population into subgroups. So let's say you have 100 people. We said, well, let's divide this group up into uh, 20 groups of five people. Now, each of those groups of five people could be put into its own chat room or its own video conference and, and have a, a thoughtful, deliberative conversation that could never have happened across the 100 people. And so now you have 20 parallel conversations. Now, that's not uh, a collective intelligence. That's 20 parallel conversations. Uh, so the next step is to make the groups overlap. Now, here's a problem. We humans didn't evolve to have overlapping conversations. Uh, in fact, we get very distracted by conversational cross currents. If, uh, it's actually called the, the cocktail party problem. If you go to a cocktail party, there could be 100 people in the room. Your brain is actually evolved to do the opposite. Very, very good at focusing in at the five people around you, having a thoughtful conversation, and tuning out the people on the periphery. See, that's, that it basically doesn't allow the groups to overlap. Uh, so, so what do we do? How do we solve this problem? Well, our big innovation was uh, to use AI agents. So we put conversational surrogate agents into into every single one of these rooms. And now we network these, these agents together. So in each one of these rooms, there's an artificial agent that's that's a sixth member of the group. It's, uh, it's observing the conversation in real time. It's distilling out insights in real time. It's passing those insights to, to conversational surrogates in other rooms, which receive those insights and then express them conversationally as if they're part of the conversation. So now you have information passing around to this entire network, allowing for a unified conversation that, that achieves the benefits of small deliberative conversation and the benefits of large scale collective intelligence all in one. And we call that conversational swarm intelligence. Uh, it requires sophisticated architecture that we've been developing for a long time, uh, but it works. And um, we built that architecture into a platform called Thinkscape, which we've been testing with universities and, and validating over time and publishing studies. And I'll talk about uh, a couple of them. So we developed the Thinkscape platform. And in, Thinkscape is focused right now on text chat conversations, but the architecture could work with voice chat, video chat, VR chat. One experiment, we took in groups of 48 people, a large group, um, divided that group into nine groups of five or six individuals, asked them to debate an issue. Uh, this is what Thinkscape platform looks like. It's a chat room. Uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on beyond, behind the scenes. Uh, also, there's real-time analytics. So as uh, stakeholders can actually watch this conversation from the God's eye view and see sentiments emerging and see information passing around and, and see the group converging on solutions. It's, it's actually quite remarkable to watch a collective superintelligence from above as it deliberates and converges. So let's look at the results. Uh, again, we compared a standard chat room, 48 people in, in, one, uh, in one room to a conversational swarm intelligence uh, split across uh, a number of rooms with AI agents passing information around. Uh, what happened? Well, uh, the conversational swarm intelligence participants contributed 51% more content conversationally than the users in the standard chat room. Uh, in addition, the conversational swarm intelligence participants in, in Thinkscape 
showed 37% less variance between the most vocal and least vocal participants. So instead of having just a, a few loud mouths dominating the conversation, this structure actually uh, gave for a much more uh, balanced conversation. We also asked people uh, uh, their subjective opinions about their experience, and 67% of the participants preferred using uh, Thinkscape, conversational swarm intelligence, uh, and only 17% preferred using standard chat. In addition, 69% of the Thinkscape participants uh, felt more heard using conversational swarm intelligence, and only 8% felt more uh, heard using standard chat. So we also did an estimation challenge to quantify and start looking at collective intelligence. Uh, and the place we started was to go back uh, and model uh, a, a similar study to Sir Fla Francis Galton, but we didn't have an ox to estimate. So we used a jar full of gumballs, which is a standard technique. Uh, we did a survey of 240 individuals, uh, so we could then compute the mean answer across 240 people. Uh, then we, we then had 240 people hold a conversation, single conversation in Thinkscape, broken up into 47 network rooms. That conversation reached an answer in only four minutes. So 240 people held a conversation, reached an answer in four minutes, which by itself is remarkable. Uh, and then we asked ChatGPT4. We gave it uh, the image of the jar full of gumballs and asked it to make its own estimate. I uh, thought that would be a good uh, thing to compare. And so, uh, so let's look at the results. Um, the average individual uh, was off by 361 gumballs, uh, which is a big error. It was about 60% error. Uh, it shows that uh, if you take 240 people, on average, they're not that good at this. Uh, remarkably, ChatGPT4 was better than the average human. Uh, so we're, we're seeing uh, ChatGPT head towards superintelligence itself. Uh, it was off by more like 45% uh, error, 279 gumballs. Uh, but fortunately, the humans took the crown back by wisdom of crowd. Uh, when they just took, we aggregated the survey in a mean, the error dropped to 163 gumballs, about 24% error. Uh, but when the group, 240 people, had a conversational deliberation for just four minutes uh, and converged on an answer, they were off by only 82 gumballs, 12% error, dropped the error by from dropped the error by half from uh, traditional wisdom of crowd shows that uh, conversational deliberation makes a big difference and it is absolutely pushing us in this direction of uh, of collective superintelligence and estimating gumballs in a jar is not the type of problem where conversation uh, conversations will be important uh, far more complicated problems can be tackled conversationally and that's what we're working on now uh, so to wrap things up uh, we can see that Conversational swarm intelligence is a viable technology for large-scale conversations and definitely is moving us uh, in this direction for collective superintelligence. Um, it works with any size group, 100 people, 250 people, 1,000 people. Um, this, the architecture is scalable. Um, it potentially works with any modality, text chat, voice chat, VR chat. Uh, we've been focused on text chat to start. Uh, we've seen significant benefits. Uh, interactive benefits of small-scale deliberations combined with uh, the aggregation benefits of large-scale collective intelligence. In terms of current and future work, um, we are expanding to larger groups, 500 people, 1,000 people and beyond. In fact, <clears throat> we're beta testing with, with any groups uh, that want to use uh, Thinkscape with, with large, large organizations for conversational deliberation, for civic engagement, for market research with large groups of customers. Or, um, all these things are, are really powerful, and uh, we're working with beta, beta testers right now. So if you have a large organization, let us know. Um, and we are uh, getting also really powerful results in areas like market research and, and political polling, where we can have groups talk about candidates and generate massive amounts of, of insights uh, in, in just five minutes. Uh, we could have a group of 100 people discuss uh, political candidates. We've done this for pollsters and in five minutes have 400 insights get spit out through this uh, remarkable conversation. That's like having 20 to 40 focus groups happening simultaneously while sharing insights, amplifying their combined intelligence. So conversational swarm intelligence is a new form of uh, human communication uh, that leverages the benefits of small scale collaboration with the benefits of large scale uh, collective intelligence. It's, uh, it will have significant impact on uh, major markets, including enterprise collaboration, uh, market research, uh, video conferencing, and it will enable new forms of large-scale public engagement uh, for, for governance. And so uh, 
that's conversational swarm intelligence, that's Thinkscape, and uh, it's all taking us towards collective superintelligence. Thanks.